This is a quick overview of Microfocus Loader Enterprise 2020. With this release, Loader Enterprise is now the new product name for Performance Center. For a more detailed explanation of what's new in LRE 2020, there is a link to the online help in the top right corner. There are now two options to access LRE, either to the application or to the administration, and in this video we'll focus on the LRE application. Login is done as in the past. Authenticate by entering your credentials, select your domain and project, and click Login. We then land on the dashboard, which provides an overview of what's going on in the current project. We have access to the help library for the current page by selecting Help Center under the help icon, and we can also directly connect to the Loader Enterprise ID exchange, where if you have an enhancement request or an ID, you can submit it and it will be taken under consideration. Access to the standalone applications is under the Download Applications link, and here we can download the tools like VueGen and the Offline Analysis, and it's important that you use the same version of the tools as of the instance that you are using. In the bottom right corner of the dashboard, we have a resources widget that shows the number of available hosts and their states. And if I toggle over from hosts to project, I can also see the license limitation of my currently logged in project. Moving on to the hosts module, this is where we can see all of our available hosts, meaning controllers, data processors, and load generators. And we can see our current runtime state and status. If all is well, the status of our hosts should be operational. If the status is unavailable or non-operational, doing a check host on that host might give an indication of any issues. And doing a check host on an operational host should of course return all OK. In order for us to be able to run a performance test, we need to first upload our scripts and to create our test. And this is done in the test management module. We have a folder structure here, so I'll create a new folder for my test and scripts. Click the Upload Scripts button, select which scripts I would like to upload, I select two of them, and click the Upload button. Then we have to create our performance test to run the scripts, provide a name, assign it to an existing test set, which if we don't have one already can be created under Edit Test Sets here. Select the type of workload, and I'll go for basic, by test, and by number. The test configuration page has changed its GUI a little bit since the previous versions, but the functionality is more or less the same. We start by adding our scripts from the folder where we uploaded them, and once added, we can click on the script name to view it, or if so required, download it locally. With that, we can now add our load generators, and for the two groups, I'll use the same specific load generator. Edit the number of virtual users that will be running each of the scripts, and then make sure that the runtime settings are as required, which usually includes making sure that logging is disabled, that think times are used, and that pacing is set to something suitable. Since we would often like to use the same runtime settings for other groups, we can simply do a copy from one group, select the second group, and then paste the settings to that script. Now that we have our scripts, virtual users, and load generators defined, we can move on to setting the schedule for the test, which, if enabled, will automatically ramp up our virtual users for us. Since we've selected to use a basic workload by test, we then define a ramp up, the duration, and a ramp down, treating the two scripts as one group. Once happy with the setup, we click Save Test, and unless we missed something, the validation should pass. We start the test by clicking the Run Test button. We verify that the ad hoc time slot is fitting, and we click Run. And as usual, we are presented with a startup checklist, where all the needed steps are ticked off, and once all done, we end up on the run screen of the test. It will take a moment before the graphs become visible, 
Initially, we will only see a small number of graphs, since only graphs containing actual data will be available to us. Switching to the Groups tab, know that the users are yet running, since the scheduler is paused at the moment. To manually start the Vettel user, we click on the triangle and enter how many we would like to start. Once a small smoke test user is running, we can now start the scheduler and let it ramp up the load automatically for us. Now that we have some transactions coming in, we can switch over to the Graphs tab and select the graphs that we would like to observe. And at the same time, I can remove those graphs that I'm not interested in. Switching to the Transactions tab, we have a summary of the progress of the Veto users with past and failed transactions and their success rates and TPS. Then, if we see any errors in the test, we will find those error messages under the Messages tab, which at the moment is empty. Going back to the Graphs page, we can see that the test proceeds as expected. And on the Groups page, we can, for example, manually stop a number of the running virtual users by asking them to gradually exit. After that, I decide that the test has achieved its purpose, so I manually stop the run. In doing so, I make sure to collate and to analyze the results, and also to free up the current time slot. Once all stopped, we can now close the test screen. To access the results, we select the Runs tab and then the Test Run. And we can here then directly view the online HTML report, which contains an easy overview of a test we just ran, outlined in a number of different graphs. Then out on the right, if we expand the sidebar here, we also have access to the downloadable raw results, which is used with a standalone analysis tool. And we have the other reports here as well, including the HTML report in a zipped up format. If we click the View Results button here, it will open up the dashboard, which is identical to what we saw during the run. And we can yet again open and remove any of the available graphs in the same way as when the test was running. Under the Results tab, we have yet again access to the downloadable reports and log files, and as well the online HTML report. Let's move on to the last area that I will cover, which is the usage reports. These reports can be narrowed down to a specific time period, and will assist in getting a handle on how the different resources have been used within the project. There's the concurrency report, which shows the number of concurrent runs, the max amount of concurrent virtual users, which also is broken down to a per protocol level. These protocol details are also available in its own report under protocol granularity, and as we can see, there are a large number of other reports as well. So, we've now reached the end of this video, and while this has been a very quick overview of LoadRunner Enterprise 2020, I do hope that it has been beneficial to you, and if there are any further question marks still, then the online help is a valuable resource that will answer most of your questions.